Hello and welcome. My name is Maddie and I'm a clinical counselor at the Puck Silmar Complex. And I'm Olivia and I'm a counselor at Community Charter Elementary School. And we're going to be presenting on how parents can support their children during the coronavirus crisis. Okay. So tips for nurturing and protecting children at home. Um, so as we're all working from home now and all we've transitioned all of our kids to homeschooling as well, um, parents are struggling with how to keep their children happy, healthy, and occupied. Um, if you feel anxious with not really knowing how to protect your kid or how to nurture your kid during this time, that is totally normal. This is a very disruptive time for many of us. And it's difficult to jug work obligations at the same time as all of this. Um, so hopefully today we can give you some tips for nurturing and protecting your children. Okay, so tips to help calm fears, manage stress, and keep the peace. Keeping routines in place. So setting and sticking to a regular schedule is key, even when you're all at home all day long. Um, with the stay at home orders, usually if you're going to work, you'll have a routine for the work week and you'll get up and you'll go to your office. It's really important that you mimic a routine here at home. So kids should also be mimicking a similar routine and a schedule. So they should be getting up, eating and going to bed at their normal times or typical times that they would during a school day. Consistency and structure for, is calming during times of stress and kids, especially younger kids or those who experience anxiety or any nervous feelings, benefit from knowing what's going to happen and when so that they can best prepare throughout the day. The schedule can mimic a school day or a day camp schedule Changing activities at predictable intervals and alternating periods of study and play are also important. So as much as you wanna stick to a schedule, it's really fun and continues to be encouraging and motivating throughout the day to add little fun um, activities that you would be doing. Maybe if you're having art class scheduled in the day to find a really cool activity that they would enjoy. A lot of kids love slime or making beads, like friendship bracelets. So anything that could change up the activity, maybe for one day you do PE and you do a dance video. Those are gonna be really fun and encouraging for kids to follow throughout the day. It may help to print out a schedule sheet um, and go over as a family each morning or at the end of each week. So let's say on Sundays, you guys create a weekly schedule, Monday through Friday and Saturdays, maybe your free day for something. So setting a timer will also help kids know when activities are about to begin or end. And it's really important to prime them before you set the timer. So instead of just setting the timer and they have no idea what's happening, to say, hey Maddie, it, I'm gonna start the timer and in two minutes, we're gonna get started on our math assignment of, for the day. Just so that they know, um, okay, well, I have two minutes to clean up. I have two minutes to go to the bathroom, grab water, grab a snack, whatever they need so that they're best prepared to go on to the next activity or task. And having regular reminders will also be really helpful to limit the amount of meltdowns that are going to happen in transition time. So especially if you're dealing with the younger kids, um, just taking the iPad away or a tablet away or toy away can really provoke a lot of meltdowns for them because they're like, excuse me, I was playing with that, how dare you? So to definitely, before you take it, say you have one more minute on that. And once the minute is up, you're gonna take the toy away or whatever it is so that they can transition smoothly without a possible meltdown. Okay, so be creative about new activities and exercise. Okay, so incorporating new activities into your routine is really important. This could be anything from just doing a puzzle um, or having a family game night maybe one evening. Um, you know, this is a new situation and it's very uncertain and it is causing a lot of anxiety for, you know, parents as well as their kids. So it's important that we build in activities that are also fun, that bring the family together. This might be the first time that a lot of families have been able to have extended family time together. Um, so really just encouraging that, 
uh, building activities that help us get exercise, right? We're stuck inside all day. We need to build in activities that allow us to go out and exercise while practicing safe social distancing measures. So taking a daily walk as a family or a bike ride, maybe doing yoga together, um, as Olivia said, maybe having a little dance party. Those are great fun ways to let kids burn off the energy and make sure everyone's staying active. Making sure that we have an active schedule also ensures that when it comes time for our sleep routines, kids are much more able to fall asleep because they've been properly tired out throughout their day. Um, so I love this. Go back to the 80s before a time of scream prevalence. So think about summer camp, right? What are some fun summer camp activities that maybe you loved as a kid? As Olivia was saying, maybe we could do some arts and crafts. We could make some friendship bracelets, you know, um, do a science project, imaginary games, musical activities, household projects, board games. These are all just different ideas of ways to get the family involved, increase family cohesion, um, and also make it more fun for the kids, right? Decrease their levels of anxiety and increase your levels of family connectedness. Manage your own anxiety. It's totally understandable to be anxious right now. This is a time where we don't know what's really happening. Um, a lot of times we cough and we think that we're sick and we have this virus. So it's really important to be able to acknowledge the anxiety that we're feeling and to manage the anxiety. So experiencing anxiety has a big impact on our kids and keeping your worries in check will help your whole family navigate this uncertain situation as easily as possible. Watch out for catastrophic thinking. So like the example before, assuming that every cough is a sign you've been infected or reading news stories that dwell on worst case scenarios, this leads to catastrophic thinking that you're going to get really sick and the world's basically going to end. And it's, it's really not, and you will be okay. Um, so keep a sense of perspective, engage in solution-focused thinking, and balance this with mindful acceptance. It is absolutely okay to be a little worried about a cough because it is a virus that we don't know how quickly it can come to us. Um, so you can, it is okay and it's normal to worry, but the mountain out of a molehill is really gonna create a lot of stress and anxiety on you and it's gonna impact your kids as well. So for those moments when you do catch yourself feeling anxious, try to avoid talking about your concerns within earshot of children. Kids are really smart and they know the perfect timing to listen to something that's not kid friendly. So very important to be mindful of where your kids are. If you're feeling stressed, maybe take a step back, go take a deep breath outside, um, organize your closet. I don't know. Go somewhere to let your worries relax a little bit because kids are very in tune to other worries and they're very in tune to conversations that they shouldn't be really listening in on. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, step away, take a break. That can look like taking a shower, going outside into another room, taking a few deep breaths. These are all really important to help manage your anxiety um, because anxiety can then be passed on to your kids and they pick up on your emotions. Um, and then they start experiencing anxiety as well. Okay. So how to decrease your own anxiety? One way is to limit consumption of news. Um, so staying informed is important. We need to be informed about what's going on in the state of our world. Um, but it is important that we limit the consumption of news and social media, especially because that has the potential to feed into our anxiety. Um, so what that looks like, that might mean, okay, I'm going to check the news every maybe once a day instead of obsessively looking at my social media feed and seeing it, you know, every hour or so. Um, you know, really turn off the TV, mute. If you have some friends or coworkers who are prone to sharing panic-inducing posts, maybe unfollow those friends for now. Um, you know, just because it's not a news article, it could still increase our anxiety. For example, seeing photos of people in masks everywhere or, um, you know, seeing photos of 
traffic in LA, you know, being completely deserted and empty. These aren't necessarily news sources, but they can increase our anxiety or just further remind us that there is a pandemic going on. And we need to take a break from those reminders sometimes, right? Um, so take a social media hiatus or make a point of following accounts that share content to take your mind off of the crisis. So maybe following, you know, nature posts about, um, you know, anything, art, baking, crafts, just something that feels good for you, a hobby that you're engaged in. Um, so we're limiting our consumption of harmful social media messages, and we're going to increase our consumption of, um, you know, hobby related things that make us feel calm and centered. Stay in touch virtually. So keep your, keeping your support network is really important right now, especially with physical distancing orders. So even when you're not able to call or text friends or family to maybe set aside time, reach out to one another, maybe today doesn't work, but you both have time on Wednesday at 3 p.m. It's really important to keep your social network strong to help support you, support each other and feel connected. This plays a really important role in regulating your mood and helping you stay grounded. And the same thing is true for your kids. So we really encourage kids to stay connected with their friends. If they were in school, they would have those social outlets to go to and experience. So letting kids use social media with inappropriate reasons, such as Skype or FaceTime, um, for younger kids, maybe it's with parental supervision, so you're in the same room with them, or you've made an agreement to where they feel like they have a sense of privacy so they can talk about stuff with their friends and not have you over their shoulder, um, but are still safe on their social media platforms. Um, communication can help kids feel less alone and mitigate some of the stress that comes from being away from their friends. Technology can also help younger kids feel closer to relatives or friends they can't see at the moment. Um, video chatting is a really cool way to connect and maybe you set up a scheduled routine where um, every night, every other night, they are able to contact their grandparents and they can read a story to each other. So again, it doesn't have to be, um, hey, Lisa, what are you up to today? It could be a fun activity that maybe they're doing together. So like Maddie said, I'm um, doing a hobby. What a cool idea would that be that you could video chat your family or friends and you guys are doing the same hobby or sharing hobbies with one another. That would be such a cool thing to do. It helps release your stress and your anxiety. And also too, you, you're able to connect with other people doing really cool stuff. Okay, so make plans. Um, it's really important that in the face of all this scary stuff that's outside of our control, we be proactive about what we can control. So that also adds um, stability to our lives and reduces that feeling of out of control chaos. So making plans um, to help you visualize the near future. So, you know, as Olivia was saying, maybe we can connect, you know, maybe we can have um, a play date with another friend virtually. Um, what can your family do that would be fun outside? What are some plans of some things that you can cook together at this time? Um, making lists that your kids can add to as well. So maybe they have an idea about a fun activity that might involve um, Skyping their favorite aunt or something, and then they all engage in a, a baking activity together. Um, so by you being able to model uh, a, your a, an appropriate response in this crisis by you modeling, um, you know, being consistent, being reassuring, that also shows kids how to respond in the face of a crisis. So if they're able to see, you know, wow, my family is responding in, you know, a way where we think creatively together, we're closer than we were before, that increases their feelings um, that, you know, everything is going to be okay, actually. Um, even better, assigning kids tasks that will help them feel as though they are part of the family. So increasing their self-efficacy by telling them, okay, well, what about if you take care of, you know, doing some of the dishes tonight? Or, you know, maybe let's set the table together today. I know you don't usually help, but I would really appreciate your help today. Um, by them seeing that they're making a valuable contribution to their family, that also is something that they can control. That increases those feelings of safety and security as well. Um, so increasing children's self-efficacy during this time is very important. Keep it positive. 
So although we might be feeling apprehensive, to most kids, the words schools closed are cause for celebration. So like, yes, summer started early. Yeah, whatever. I log on every once in a while throughout the day to do my assignments, but I'm on summer break. Um, parents should validate there are feelings of excitement. Um, sometimes kids experience school-related anxiety and have a harder time going to school, and so this could be such a relief for them right now. Um, but it is really important that this is also a time you're not on summer break yet, you are still in school. So find ways to help kids stay calm and happy throughout this time. Let kids know that you're glad that they're excited, but make sure that they understand that though it may feel like vacation, they've had in the past, things are a little bit different this time. So for example, it's so cool to have everyone home together. We're going to have a great time. Remember though, we'll still be doing work and sticking to a regular schedule. It's the same as when you go on vacation and let's say it's like seven days long. By day eight, you're like itching for structure and you're like, I kind of don't know what to do. So it's really important, again, to stick to this structure. Um, they're going to eventually start craving it if they definitely have gone this far without having one. Um, and it's never too late to create a schedule or a structured plan if you haven't done so already. It's never too late. Kids love structure, and it may seem like they don't, and they're like, ugh, trying to bust the bounds of it. But trust me, at the end of the day, they look back and they're like, wow, I love a good structured routine. Okay. Um, so keep kids in the loop, but keep it simple. Right? So talking to children in a clear, reasonable way is the best way to help them understand what's going on. Um, so I did find a lot of free resources online. Um, if you just Google how to talk to kids about the coronavirus or free books for talking to kids about the coronavirus, there's lots of free PDF documents available online for parents that explain what's going on in the world in a clear, easy to understand, developmentally appropriate way. Um, so you can look at those resources as well and see if that might help you figure out a way to start and initiate this conversation with your child. Um, because they all know something's wrong, right? All of a sudden, mom and dad are staying home all the time. I'm not going to school anymore. Everything is different. So at some point, you definitely have to address this with your child. You have to talk to them about it because they know something's wrong and their anxiety will be way higher if they don't have a parent checking in with them about this. Um, but remember, they don't need to know every little thing about what's going on with the coronavirus. There's no need to volunteer information that might worry them or scare them. You know, we don't need to talk about the specifics. We don't need to talk about, you know, what goes on in terms of hospitalization or the ventilators or anything like that, right? You know, you also need to keep in mind their developmental level. So talking to a four-year-old about the coronavirus and talking to a 10-year-old about the coronavirus, those are going to be two very different conversations. So it's up to you as a parent to sort of understand your child's level of anxiety, developmental level, to see if there's a way that you can um, engage them in a conversation and talk to them about it while not increasing their worry with unnecessary information. Check in with little ones. So young children may be oblivious to the facts of the situation, but they may still feel some sort of level of being unsettled due to the changes in routine, or they might be picking up on the fact that people are around um, and that they're, they're experiencing more anxiety or worry or feeling unsettled or upset. Again, kids can pick up on your energy levels and pick up on your anxiety. Um, and so for you not to explain it to them um, makes them question, wait, am I supposed to be freaking out too? Because my mom is freaking out, so I should be freaking out, right? So plan to check in with younger children periodically and give them a chance to process any worries that they may be having. A lot of questions that I get personally is, well, is my four-year-old going to understand what I'm explaining to them? Surprisingly, yes. It, obviously, don't talk to your four-year-old like you would a 27-year-old or a 40-year-old, but talk to them as your child. And you could explain, you know, mommy's feeling a little bit worried right now, or you could pose the idea of anxiety. Use these as learning opportunities for yourself and for your children to work on communicating your emotions, because a lot of times people have 
trouble expressing their emotions. Um, whether they feel shameful of it or embarrassed that they're feeling nervous, they're all emotions that everybody feels all the time and at different rates. So definitely consider having a conversation that's age appropriate with them to check in and see how they're doing. Also, it's a great way to model expressing emotion to your child if you're doing the same thing in appropriate terms. So if you're saying, I'm feeling a little bit nervous right now, I need to go take a deep breath outside, you're modeling an appropriate positive coping skill for your child, which is such a great opportunity for them to have. Children who are tantruming more than usual or being defiant or acting out may actually be feeling anxious. A lot of times parents are just like, oh, they're being such a brat today or they're having so many more behaviors, but really that's underlying anxiety that's coming out in tantruming or in being defiant or acting out. It comes out more physically with kids. Um, so it's important to pick a calm and undistracted time um, to gently ask them how they're feeling and make sure to respond to outbursts in a calm, consistent, and comforting way. Um, when you react to an outburst with an angry outburst, it doesn't help the situation. So make sure to recenter yourself, get yourself calm, cool, and collected, and then go address your child and talk to your child and be direct with them about things as well. Okay. So sometimes the path of least resistance is the right path. Um, so remember to be reasonable and kind to yourself. We all want to be our best parenting selves as much as we can, um, but sometimes it's okay just to let them have a little bit more time on the iPad today, right? Everything is a little bit more difficult than it was before. You're not able to, you know, provide them with the same level of attention that you were previously, perhaps. You might be working from home, overwhelmed by your own stuff that's going on, your own levels of anxiety. Um, and of course, you know, we want to provide our kids with the best environment, the best nurturance where they're feeling stimulated. You know, they're not in front of a screen all day. But if they need an extra five minutes on the iPad because you still have some work to finish up, that's okay. We have to be gentle with ourselves and we have to forgive ourselves because this isn't the time to be perfect, right? We, we cannot be perfect with the coronavirus happening. It just does not work. Um, so, you know, maybe your kids don't have TV screens on weeknights during the school year, but now that school's canceled or online, maybe they can watch a little bit of extra TV. We can relax these boundaries a bit. We can explain to kids that this is a unique situation and we can reinstate the boundaries more when life returns back to normal. Kids are able to be flexible and understand that if you explain it in an age appropriate way in which they understand, okay, mom is being honest that I can have a little bit more screen time right now, but probably when I go back to school, that's gonna stop. They're able to understand that, right? But we do wanna be gentle to ourselves and to our kids and understand that life is not gonna be perfect right now and that is okay. Accept and ask for help. So if you have a partner at home, agree maybe on different activities that you guys would be doing or household chores, childcare, um, come to a, an agreement and be able to pick off, maybe it's a rotating schedule that you guys have. If I cook today, can you do the dishes instead? Um, if I need five minutes, can you go hang out with our kids for five minutes because I just really need to finish this up? And it could be a trading off system that helps to alleviate so much stress for the both of you. Um, especially if one or both of you guys are working from home and have younger children. That way everybody gets a break and some breathing room and it's not falling all on one person's shoulders because that's a lot to handle, especially during this time. Everyone who can pitch in should. This is a great opportunity to give kids age appropriate jobs around the house. So for example, teens might be able to help mind younger siblings when both parents have to work. So um, if your teenage daughter is able to work with your seven, eight year old son and kind of work together on homework at the same time, what a better opportunity it is for them to be able to work on it together so that way both you and your partner can go work on your work assignments that you have for the day. 
most children can set the table and help keep communal spaces clean. This is also a great time to role model cleaning up after yourself and help to assist anybody that needs extra support or help or, oh, I have to go run to go do the dishes. Can I help clean up after you? Um, even toddlers can learn to pick up their own toys. It's very easy to do. You role model the behavior for them and then they're able to slowly learn to pick up their toys and put them in their baskets like they should be. Working as a team will help your whole family stay busy and make sure that no one person is being overwhelmed. So whoever the primary caretaker is, again, it shouldn't fall all on their shoulders. It's a lot of stuff to be doing right now. And so if you're all there, if you're all eating at the same kitchen table and eating the same meal and sitting under the same roof, you can all pitch in and do your share. Maybe whoever does the grocery shopping, whoever's at home, helps to unpack the groceries or clean out the fridge while they're at the grocery store so it's ready to be restocked when you guys are home. Be creative and be flexible. Try not to be hard on yourself. You have to find a balance that works for your family. Again, one structured routine that works for the Smith family is not going to work for another family because you're two different entities and you're, you have different things going on. So definitely be patient with yourselves, be creative and be flexible. The goal for this is to be able to stay calm and keep your sanity, but also stay safe at the same time. Okay. Um, so that concludes our presentation. Olivia and I will both be available afterwards for any questions that you might have. So thank you so much for joining us and for listening.